Hello everybody, I'm Derek Arden and welcome to Monday Night Live, my mon my live uh, and uncut podcast. Today I've got Tony Tony Woodall on from Medellin, Colombia, and we'll find out what Tony's doing in Colombia. Tony's from San Francisco and was the president of the Golden Gate Breakfast Club up till uh, a couple of months ago. Tony, welcome. Your company is the Motivated Action Group, and today you're going to share with us uh, walking the Camino Trail and uh, and some real tips on uh, goal setting. Tony, uh, you can share your screen now, and it's great to have you with us. Thank you very much, uh, Derek. I appreciate the opportunity to uh, speak for your uh, Monday Night Live. And today we are going to be talking about conquering the Camino, achieving a dream. In 2018, I had achieved my lifelong goal to lose weight from 300 to 185 pounds. I was running five to 10 miles a day in the best shape I was since I was 30 until I woke up on August 16th of 2019, stood up and almost fell over on my face. Uh, my, my legs weren't working right. I could hardly walk. I would could be walking and turn my head to one side and my legs would buckle. Or I could cough or uh, pass gas and my legs would buckle. I, I saw a neurologist in January and learned that I had a spinal stenosis. And I asked the doctor if I could keep running and he said, sure if you don't want to walk anymore. Wow. So in April, 2020, I saw a presentation about the Camino de Santiago. Jeff Davidson came to the Golden Gate Breakfast Club and talked about his trip along the Camino Frances. And what I had found out was that it was a path, a pilgrimage that actually is much like life and like goal setting. Uh, so I realized that uh, I decided then that I was going to walk across a country. So on the Camino, you start walking each day. We start on the Francis route in St. Jean-Pierre-de-Port in France. And then we walk every day. We get up and walk across until we get to the next city or village that we want to stop in. And we continue doing that across the country day after day after day until we reach Santiago de Compostela, about 800 to 900 kilometers away. Uh, they say it's 800, but uh, my watch and uh, my phone came out after all the other walking that we do in between there came out to about 900 kilometers. And uh, so it, it was a long walk. But uh, like life and like goal setting, the Camino is you know kind of an illustration of that. If you look at the bottom of the screen, you can see that like life and goal setting, there's a lot of ups and downs on the Camino. So we start over here at the far right. You can see the elevation here. We walk up the Pyrenees Mountains, cross over from France into Spain. And just when you think you're good, you walk downhill, which by the way, walking downhill is the hardest part of uh, walking up mountains is the downside. But we walk down and then a couple days later, we walk across the uh, up and across uh, the Alto de Perdon, another little hill. Uh, and then down again, and then back up another mountain. So it's again, it's up and down until we get to the Meseta here across a third of the country, uh, which the, we think and they say is flat, but uh, you can tell just from the elevation here, it's not, not really flat uh, as we walk across there. Certainly flatter than the Cruz de Ferro, which is uh, the highest point on the Camino Frances at 1,504 meters. And then you have this massive walk down, which is the, in my opinion, the hardest day on the Camino uh, was walking down the Cruz de Ferro and then having to walk back up another mountain until you finally get to Santiago. But it's really a lot like life and goal setting when you think about it. So being the goal setter that I am, I decided to set my goal for this particular Camino and this particular walk. And the objective that I had was to experience most amazing adventure of my life, seeing something every day that I have never seen before. That was my motivation. That was my goal for the Camino. I had some key results that I wanted to make sure I could know that I was being successful. One was to walk across Spain to Santiago. The other was to visit two countries I'd never been to. I'd never been to France. and I went to Paris and then uh, at the French border, walk across the Pyrenees into Spain. And then I wanted to experience the culture of Spain up front, 
close through the food, the people, and history. And then I also wanted to meet new people from around the world and make new friends. So <clears throat> that was my objective, my goal for this. And on the first day crossing the Pyrenees here, which is what this photo is, I walked across France and crossed into the border of Spain. So I set goals since I was very young, but I never really understood how to set them correctly so that you can successfully achieve them. Uh, until I learned uh, hypnosis and hypnotherapy from uh, the father of modern hypnosis, uh, Dr. John Kappas at the Hypnosis Motivation Institute, where I really learned how our minds and our subconscious mind work. And I started taking that information and the goal setting frameworks that I'd studied. And I started my goal getting program and later wrote my book, Nine Steps to Successful Goal Achievement, so that I could share what I learned. And so today I'm going to focus on a few of these nine steps to, uh, you know, as we go across to help you on your know of life. The first is write it down. Writing your goals down is crucial to success. You want to, if you can, preferably write them down in longhand or cursive, if you know how. So these days, some people don't know how to do that. Uh, but when you write them down, it's important that you be very specific. Specific is terrific, as I like to say. And you want to make sure that you communicate everything that uh, you want in your goal and your objective that you're trying to set. You want to say it in a way that your brain can understand it. How you talk to your brain, how we communicate with our brain is very, very important. What you want to do is you want to be sure and write it down as an outcome. What's it going to be like? How are you going to see yourself when you achieve that particular goal? So you don't want to write, you know, the different steps that it's going to take you to get there. You really want to write down as I did in my, you want the outcome of that particular goal that you're trying to achieve uh, as what you want to write down there. To give you an idea, when I set my weight loss goal back in 2018, I had been 300 pounds for basically about 30 years. Uh, and I decided in 2018 that I needed to change that and follow my own recommendations. Uh, so I, on I wrote my goal as this, on December 31st, when I wake up, I will go into the bathroom and on the scale and see 185 pounds. I'm going to jump up. I'm going to pump my fist and I'm going to shout, woohoo, happy new year, happy new you. I just had to have that goal. That was the uh, intention there and the outcome that I would achieve that and have that joyous feeling. So you want to make sure that you write clearly defined written goals. Napoleon Hill, many of you may have read Think and Grow Rich. He interviewed you know, hundreds of people at that time that were successful in their goals. And every one of them had the same comment that they had to have clearly defined written goals. And again, be specific, not just written, but you want to make sure that they're clearly defined as you go forward. The next thing that you want to think about is you have to define your why. Why do you want this particular goal, this objective that you've set? Why do you want it? So before you start writing your goal down, it's important that you be able to communicate that why, your reason for that. You want to think about it you know, very deeply. I like to talk about the, uh, I'm sure most of you have heard the five whys, the Ishikawa diagram kind of thing, uh, where you get down to the root cause or the root reason. Uh, you want to think about asking yourself why as many times as it takes to really get to it. But what you really want to do is find out the answer to three important questions. Who do you want to be when you reach this goal? Again, we're looking at outcomes. Who do you want to be as a person when you achieve this particular goal? How is it going to make you feel? How are you going to think? How are you going to look when you achieve that goal? You know, as a person, you want to define that as specifically as possible so that when you write your objective down, your goal down, that you have that where you can read that periodically and understand and your mind knows what it's looking. Our brain is very powerful, but it will listen to and do what you tell it to do, you have to make sure that you're very specific and understand not just why, but also the emotions that are in there. So you want to find out who do I want to be? And then I also recommend 
defining in that where do you want to be two different things you know where in my life do i want to be when i get to the outcome of this particular goal that i've set so who do you want to be where do you want to be and to add a little bit of urgency to that we also like to recommend that you put down why do you want it now Again, I, I was fat for 30 years. I weighed almost over 300 or right at 300 pounds. Always wanted to be thinner, thought I would get there. I, I never could lose the weight for 30 years, um, you know, until I started thinking about why do I want to get to that point? So I went through this exercise of thinking about why I really wanted to be 185 pounds or lower. Uh, but uh, you want to think about why you want it now, because that is going to give you that sense of urgency, that need that you have to fulfill to achieve that goal. Because you sometimes, like I said, I've set the goal many times. If you set New Year's resolution, we never include any of this. And that's why most of them don't work. Uh, but you want to be able to do that. Why is this a priority now? And once you've defined that, you have that as you write it down into your mind and into your brain so that uh, it will then take effect as you start working on that. The next thing that is crucial is visualization. This is me walking across the Camino. Uh, I actually had been walking and you see my leg on the right and I'm kind of walking very slow. One of my friends that I had met on the Camino right before the day before this had caught up with me and she was like two days behind me normally but I had taken a couple rest days because of my knee blowing out. Uh, the doctor gave me some medicine, uh, some vitamin I, uh, ibuprofen, and uh, wrapped my leg. And this morning, I asked him, I said, uh, you know, uh, what do you recommend? He said, well, if uh, you take three weeks vacation, you know, off, that'll be great. I go, that's not going to happen. And uh, I said, well, if you feel like walking tomorrow, you can get up and walk. So I did and I started walking, but you want to visualize yourself doing that. Most of you have heard of Michael Phelps, the greatest swimmer of all time, great athlete. Michael had a pre-meet ritual, which included what his coach called the video. Michael, since he was a kid, would follow the same ritual every day. When he passed his coach on the way to the blocks, his coach would say, Michael, play the video. And he would visualize himself swimming and winning in record time every single time that he did and got up to the blocks. So once you've defined who you want to be and where you want to be, you want to start visualizing that video that you're going to play every day. Every time you get a chance, you want to be able to have that visualized image of yourself as who you're going to be, who you and where you're going to be. And you want to be able to feel the emotion that you're going to have. That's why I did the fist pump and the woohoo as part of my visualization for losing weight. You want to feel the emotion that you're going to have in there. Yeah, Derek. Tony, you better turn that off. It's making me tired watching you uh, keep walking along there with your back hunched and your, your bad knees and everything else. Uh, you're turning me off doing it. Uh, all right. Well, let's see if I can stop it there. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, that's the thing with the Camino and with holes, you want to keep doing it every day that you need to do what you got to do. But but yeah, so um, you want to feel the emotions in this video. So it's important that you take that and create your own video of who you're going to be and where you want to be when you achieve your goal. Uh, Matthew Walker, the professor of neuroscience and psychology at UC Berkeley, says that visualization is 50%, 50% as effective as physically performing the actual skills. 50% as effective at changing the plastic connections, the neuroplasticity in the brain. So the visualization or passive play, as he calls it, can cause a rewiring of the brain beneficially. Uh, and that's a proven fact. They've got many studies that have proven that. So it's important that you visualize what you're going to achieve uh, on your goal. The next key that's important is measuring and tracking your goal. You want to measure and track what you're doing, how it's going. We call those key results in uh, objectives and key results, OKRs. You want to know how you're doing on your um, goal, how you're um, achieving it, whether you're moving the needle or not. So you want to think about how you're going forward and how you're going to be successful and how you can measure that. 
On the Camino, we all carry what we call the Camino passport. The Camino passport, we have it stamped at the beginning when we start the Camino. So if you see up here in the upper left-hand corner, that's at the um, Pilgrim's office in St. Jean-Pierre-de-Port. And then we start getting stamps across as we go in to check into each albergue or accommodation that we stay in. We present that with our official uh, government passport. Uh, they stamp that with their custom stamp. And as we go to any of the bars, cafes, or shops along the way, we also ask them to stamp our passport. So we continue that throughout the Camino. As you see, this is just the front page. I have the entire back page is also filled. And actually, uh, I had so many, I had to get another uh, passport to add the rest of them on there. But this is a memory and a feeling. You can see where you've been each day and how you've gone on the Camino. And then the last stamp, we get is on the left side on the front of the uh, passport uh, where the uh, pilgrim's office in Santiago de Compostela will stamp it with the date that we ended. And this one, I ended uh, this particular one on September 8th of 2022, uh, but you get your stamps out there, but it gives you a measurement of how you're doing along the way of the Camino. So it, it's good for you know, following along what you're doing and then seeing yourself as you're moving there that you've achieved these every single day you've achieved something moving you towards the end of your goal yes Derek. tony um did you have somewhere to stay every night so you had to keep up or did you have to find somewhere to stay well you de it depends on how you feel on this particular trip most days we uh would get to the city or the town or village that we wanted to stay in and then we would just stop at an albergue and see if they had a bed available uh, if there were a couple of us together, they would see if they had the same bed. Sometimes we had to split up into different albergues depending on their availability. But yeah, some days we didn't know. We were basically homeless. Uh, we had everything on our backs, two days change of clothes, uh, other stuff. And then, um, you know, that was pretty much it. And then we would uh, trust the Camino that it would provide a place for us to sleep at the end of the day. Uh, most days I never had a problem finding a bed. Uh, a couple of days, there are some areas that we knew were going to be heavily traveled, especially towards the uh, last hundred kilometers. So we made reservations ahead of time for places that we knew were going to be, um, you know, heavily traveled and possibly sure. full. Uh, Thank you. Most of the time, we just go and find a good place to stay, and uh, we had a great time doing that. So find a system that you can track your goal is Belong. It could be a spreadsheet, it could be a system, electronic system online or something like that that you can use. Uh, there's several of those available out there. To achieve, you must act. So you have to make a commitment with yourself that you're going to do what you need to do each day. You want to create, I like to create a promissory note with myself that I write out what I'm going to do and that I'm going to do everything every day. And I sign it because your word is your bond. At least we used to say that and hopefully it's still true. Uh, it may help you find an accountability partner to help with that as well. I have uh, several goals that I'm working on and I chat frequently with my accountability partner, usually every Tuesday and each evening. I text my coach letting them know what I did that day to uh, towards my goals. But you want to protect your mindset also by, by hanging around like-minded people. Uh, that's very important. You know, you're as, only as powerful as the five people you hang around, as Jim Rose Roan used to say. And uh, on the Camino, we all had a shared goal. We all wanted to achieve the same thing. And uh, everybody may walk their own way. Some may go off and or walk alone for a while, uh, but we all wanted to finish and we'd come together at the end, uh, but we were all helping each other out, stay motivated as we were going through. And that's the other thing that you wanna think about is reward yourself. Uh, that one of my favorite quotes by Johnny e. Jones is what gets measured gets done. What gets measured and fed back gets done well. And what gets reported, or excuse me, rewarded gets repeated. Mm -hmm. So the more that you can do that, and if you're familiar with the habit loop, um, the habit loop is all driven by the reward that you're going to get at the end, whatever that is, whether it's good or bad, you perform, you get triggered, and then you do whatever the action is to get that reward. So we like to reward ourselves. This is our uh, night four on the left, uh, and the night after our Camino family, after we reach the cruise de ferro which i mentioned being the highest point on the camino 
Uh, we got to, on the left, we got to uh, a village called Fonso Badan. And at Fonso Badan, we had the best Italian Napolitano pizza at the pizza place behind us there. Um, there's 12 buildings in this village. And one of them is an Italian pizza place, which absolutely makes the best pizza in the world uh, in the top of near the top of the mountain in Spain. And on the right, at the bottom of that mountain, that horrible trip down, which was the hardest day on the Camino for me and everybody else, we were supposed to go an additional 10 uh, kilometers to Ponferrada, could not make it, said, nope, we're going to stay here. And the village of Molina Seca is one of the top five places on the Camino, in my opinion. Uh, so, but people all over the world got together here and decided to hang around and have a party. Alive, oh, alive, 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 why the girls are so pretty, I first set my eyes on sweet Molly Malone. As she wheeled her wheelbarrow through the streets broad and narrow, crying cockles and muscles alive. And those are my friends that uh, we eventually achieved our goal of walking across Spain into Santiago, and we gathered at the front of the cathedral there uh, where the remains of St. James the Apostle uh, are supposedly interred uh, and uh, we had a big reunion there everybody had a great time we all achieved our goal everybody received what's called the Compostela which designates that we will require required amount uh, to get to uh, Santiago and achieve this particular goal and then afterwards we celebrated, as you can see, my friends from around the world uh, that I met. We have uh, Jordan on the left from Alaska, uh, Christine from Ireland, Anna from uh, Poland and now the Netherlands, uh, Fiona from Ireland, Maureen from Maryland in the U.S., myself, Jan from Germany, and uh, Guillermo from Brazil. We celebrated then and actually probably till well after midnight that night. Uh, having a great time celebrating our success in that particular goal. And that was our Camino and the nine steps or the ones that I wanted to focus on today um, that got us where we wanted to go. And, uh, you know, again, I recommend, you know, the nine steps to successful goal achievement. If you have any questions, if I can help you with anything, uh, this is how you can reach me. Derek, back to you, sir. Thanks, Tony. Thanks for a fantastic presentation and lots of pictures. You've got some more pictures for us in a minute, I know. Um, Tony, a couple of things on goal setting. Number one, uh, urban myth. In 1953, Stanford University claimed that 3% uh, of their people that uh, had set goals were earning 97% of the income. Um, I understand now that's an urban myth. It wasn't true, but it does have a resonance to me of writing the goals down and being very clear about them. What's your take on that? Yeah, it actually was, I think, one of the first uh, cases of uh, fake news, uh, you know, out there. It, it was fake. It was not true. Uh, I've heard for many years when I was, and I used it in all of my presentations when I was doing goal setting presentations in the 80s and 90s until I found out in 2009 that it wasn't uh, real. It was not true. Uh, and what I heard also after that is Dr. Uh, Gail Matthews with the Dominican University in San Rafael, California, heard the same thing. And she goes, well, I'm a psychology professor. I'm going to do that experiment. So if you Google Dr. Gail Matthews, at the, you know, goal getting goal setting, um, you'll see it on the Internet. Uh, she has the full study out there where it did prove that if you write your goals down, you're about 42% higher probability of achieving them just by writing them down. But if you go and make sure that you uh, use accountability, you know, regularly tracking and uh, recording your goals and your progress, uh, getting accountability partners and coaching, that will increase it even more. So it, it, even though it was fake news and an urban myth uh, in the past, uh, Dr. Gail Matthews did actually prove that herself so with her with her uh, study at the dominican university oh, okay fantastic and um 
How did you lose 300 pounds despite all the goal setting? That's pretty amazing, isn't it? 30 years at 300 pounds down to 100. Well, I didn't lose 300 pounds. I made 300 pounds and I lost I lost 115 down to 185 pounds. Yeah. Um, but I did it through um, basically what I call the L&M diet, eat less and exercise more. Uh, I cut out carbs. I cut out uh, sweets. Uh, for about, uh, you know, my goal was to have it done by December 31st of 2018. And I didn't start until uh, February of 2018 uh, because I was, uh, I did made the decision on my 60th birthday. Uh, and that's when I set my goal. That was my big motivation. I was uh, 60 years old and I wanted to live longer and healthier and do a lot more things like travel and um, stay alive. Uh, and I knew that if I kept staying at 300 pounds, that would be short lived. Uh, so that was my why. And uh, I was also spending a lot of money on diabetes. I'd gone, uh, when I got to 300 pounds, I basically became a type two diabetic and uh, knew that it would, I would die quicker if I didn't lose the weight. And like I said, it took me till I was 60 to make that decision, but I really, I cut down the, um, um, carbs and sugar and ate mostly protein and vegetables and a lot of it. Uh, and then I also exercised a lot. I would go to the gym every single day or eventually started running uh, where I was up running up to 10 miles a day and uh, doing that. But uh, basically trying to cut my carbs or cut my calorie deficit down to 300 or 2000 sure. calories. Sure. A day. Well, well done. Can you stop share screen sharing now and then we can yep. see you even clip yeah. more clearly which would be great thank you for that and uh, we can also see the chicken in the background on your uh, on your cloud how about that looking into clouds you can see all sorts of see all sorts of things if you're in uh, columbia and you've got a good uh, imagination uh, one of our uh, one of our listeners wants to know how long it took the camino huh, tony the Camino, it depends on how fast you walk and whatever the, the gentleman, Jeff Davidson, who did it and told us about it at the Golden Gate Breakfast Club. He did it in 25 days his first time. That's fast. He's walked. That was probably 30 kilometers a day uh, to get that. Uh, I did it in 37 days. And that includes um, I took uh, three rest days, two for my knee and one in uh, the village of Burgos uh, that I wanted to uh, and plan to stay uh, an extra day there, uh, but I needed the rest anyway for my knee. Uh, but 37 days is what it took me to get there. And how much did it cost you, ballpark? Because it sounds like you were doing it in the, on the cheap, apart from all those beers that you were drinking that were in the pictures. <laughs> uh, yeah, there were a lot of beers that we drank. Uh, some, Yeah, I, we won't go how many, but uh, we drank a lot along the way, a lot of beers. Uh, and again, the great thing you uh, stop along the way as you're walking at, you know, every five or seven kilometers is usually a, a bar or cafe. And, we, you know, towards the afternoon, we would stop and have a beer uh, or two. Uh, but uh, it, I didn't really get the total cost, but it was fairly cheap. Uh, typically, the albergues were anywhere from uh, I think the cheapest that I stayed was eight euro for a night uh, mm. till about to about uh, 10 or 12 euro a night. Um, you know, the hotel I stayed in when I hurt my knee was $75 a night, but uh, that's a little different. But typically, albergues are very inexpensive. And then they have usually, as you're walking across uh, at the albergues or in many of the restaurants, what they call the pilgrim's menu, which uh, was started back in the uh, Franco days. But uh, it's essentially you get um, bread, wine and or beer or water. Uh, you get a salad and then you get uh, two different uh, options of either like a pasta, vegetables, salad, something like that is the first course. And then a second course, which is typically a protein. But again, that can be uh, a salad, again, depending on your, your, you know, if you're vegetarian or vegan, they try to do as much of that as they can. But mostly that runs about uh, anywhere from the cheapest I paid was like $5 or five euro. And the most I paid was at that three-star hotel uh, where I was staying at it was 15 euro for amazing meal. Uh, Five-star, in my opinion, restaurant meal there um, at 15 euro. Uh, so it was great, but very inexpensive. Then along the way, the, at the time, the euro was fairly about the, even with the dollar when, that year that I went, uh, but it was uh, still 
very cheap. The wine, my daughter and I went the first five days together. And when we stopped at our first stop in Roncesvalles and a, a hotel there to, before uh, we were at the Alberga, but we went to the hotel to have a glass of wine each. Uh, she got a white, I got a red. They brought them out and the total bill was four euro. I said, is that each? They go, oh, that's total. I go, oh, okay. So instead of my $15 a glass of wine in California, uh, it was anywhere from a buck fifty to two dollars max. Um, Fantastic. For a glass well, we're nearly uh, at the end beer. of the session, Tony. But just remind us of the secrets of goal setting. Your three top tips for goal setting to make sure that uh, we're getting on with it tomorrow. Okay, my my three top are define your why, figure out what you want, and make sure that you communicate it. You know properly to your mind and your subconscious. The other is visualization. Once you've done that, you want to make sure that you visualize what you want to be and how you want to be at the end there. And the other one is write it down. Make sure that you have those written down somewhere that you can look at them, um, you know, whenever you need to, and whether it's the tracking system that you're using along the way or whatever. But those are the top three I would recommend. They're all important uh, as part of the ingredients to successful goal achievement. And to life, Tony. Tony uh, Woodall, thanks very much for joining Monday Night Live. We really appreciate that. Can I ask members of uh, Monday Night Live to show your appreciation in the normal Monday Night Live way? Superb presentation. Thanks for joining us, Tony. I know that people can find you on Amazon, find your book on Amazon, which I thoroughly recommend. Uh, I've read it and it's got some great tips in it. So uh, we'll see you again. Thank you. You're a regular member of Monday Night Live as a guest. So uh, we look forward to seeing you every week. Thanks, Tony, for joining us. Thank you.